Now, let us see some advanced numericals based on the thermodynamic processes. In this example, in any thermodynamic process, pressure varies as P is equals to AV plus B. Here P is the pressure, V is the volume and A is the constant. We want to find the work done by gas during expansion from 1 meter cube to 2 meter cube. The work done is given by integration of T dV that is AV plus B dV limits from V1 to V2. So work done will be equal to integration of AV will be V square by 2 plus integration of B will be PV limits from V1 to V2. V1 is 1 meter cube and V2 is 2 meter cube. So work done will be A into 2 square by 2 plus B into 2 plus A into 1 square by 2 minus B into 1. So work done will be this will be 2a plus 2b minus a minus b. So work done will be equal to 2 minus 1 by 2 that will be equal to 3a by 2 plus b joule. So this will be our final answer. In this example, a girl running along a bridge and she does 4.3 into 10 power 5 joule of work and give off 3.8 into 10 power 5 joule of heat. What is the change in her internal energy? If she is not running but walking, then gives off 1.2 into 10 power 2 joule of heat and her internal energy decreases by 2.6 into 10 power 5 joule then how much work has she done while walking let us consider the first case in which she is running on the beach and she does the work 4.3 into 10 power 5 joule here work is done by the system, so work done will be positive. It She gives off the heat energy 3.8 into 10 power 5 joule. Here heat is released by the system, so Q will be negative of 3.8 into 10 power 5 joule. We want to find the change in her internal energy. Delta Q is equal to delta U plus delta W. So, delta U will be delta Q minus delta W. Delta Q is given minus 3.8 into 10 power 5 minus delta W will be 4.3 into 10 power 5. So, the answer will be minus 8.1 into 10 power 5 joule. Now, in the second case, she is not running but walking, then she gives off heat energy of 1.2 into 10 power 2 joule, but that will be minus as heat is released by the system and her internal energy decreases by, so delta U is minus of 2.6 into 10 power 5 joule. We want to find the work done by her. This is 1.2 into 10 power 5. Work then can be written as Q minus delta U. Q is minus 1.2 into 10 power 5 minus of minus 2.6 into 10 power 5. 
so work done will be to 1.4 into 10 power 5 joule in this example we are given a PV graph for four different processes isothermal adiabatic for monoatomic diatomic and triatomic linear we want to mention the type of graph here as we have seen in pv graph as the graph is drawn for common equation pv power n is equals to constant and as we move downward the value of n will increase so for first case n will be equal to 1 so that will be the isothermal graph remaining 3 will be adiabatic and we know that as we move downward the atomicity will increase sorry the atomicity will decrease and gamma's value will increase so the second graph will be for triatomic adiabatic the third graph will be for diatomic adiabatic and the fourth graph will be for monoatomic adiabatic process in this example n moles of a monoatomic gas is carried around the reversible rectangular cycle a b c d a the temperature at a is t naught the thermodynamic efficiency of cycle is the efficiency of any thermodynamic cycle is given by work done per unit heat supplied so that is we want to find but in percentage here the work done will be area under the graph And we can find delta Q and delta U for different processes. So first let us find the temperature at different points. Here the state is P0, V0 and temperature is T0. At point B the state will be 2 P0, V0. So temperature at B will be equal to 2 T0. C the state will be 2 P0 into 2 V0. So the temperature at point C will be equal to 4 T0. And temperature at D is P0 into 2 V0. So that will be equal to 2 T0. Now first let us find for AV process. Delta Q is equals to N C V delta T because the AV process is constant volume process so delta Q will be N C V delta T. C V for monoatomic gas is 3 by 2 R so N into 3 by 2 R delta T so delta Q 
will be 3 by 2 R n delta T will be temperature at B is 2 T naught and temperature at A is T naught. So that will be T naught. So delta Q for AB will be 3 by 2 R n T naught. Now for B C process as the BC process is constant volume process. We can write delta Q is equals to NCP delta T. CP for monoatomic is 5 by 2 R. Delta T is the temperature at point C is 4 T naught and temperature at B is 2 T naught. So that will be NR5 T naught. Now, the total heat input delta Q is equals to 3 by 2 plus 5 into nr t naught. That will be 13 by 2 nr t naught. Now, the total work done will be equal to the area under the graph. So that will be equal to V0 into P0, but V0 into P0 is N R T0. We want to find the efficiency. The efficiency is given by work done per unit heat given into 100%. So work done is N R T0 and the Q is 13 by 2 N R T0 into 100 Simplify this, we will get eta is equals to approximately 15.38%. In this example, a rectangular box as shown in figure has a movable and smooth partition which can slide along the length of the box. Both chambers contain one mole of monoatomic gas. at a pressure of P0, volume V0 and temperature T0. Now, the left chamber is slowly heated by an electric heater. The walls of box and partition are thermally insulated. Due to heating, gas in left chamber expands until the pressure in both the chambers become 32 P0. We want to determine the final temperature of gas in each chamber and the work done by the gas in the right chamber. So let us draw the initial and final state. Initially the pressure was P0, volume V0, temperature T0 in both the chambers and in the final state Pressure is P, volume will be V0 plus V, let's say temperature is T1 in left chamber and in this if V volume is increased here then volume on the right chamber will be decreased. So pressure is P, volume will be V0 minus P and let's say temperature is T2. Here equilibrium pressure is given 32 P0. So, for the first case, for right chamber, the compression is adiabatic. So, we can apply PV power gamma is equals to constant. It is adiabatic as the walls are insulated. So, we can write P0 V0 power 5 by 3 because it is monoatomic. So, gamma will be equal to 5 by 3 for monoatomic gas. So, P0 V0 power 5 by 3 is equals to final pressure is 32. Let's say final volume is right chamber V0 minus V power 5 by 3. This P0 will get cancelled out. 
so taking cube on both the side v not power 5 will be equal to Two power five into v naught minus v power five by three. Take taking one by fifth root, so we can write v naught power one by three is equals to two into v naught minus v whole power one by three. Take cube on both these side, so v naught will be equal to two power three that will be equal to eight v naught minus 8v so from this we can write 8v is equals to 7v naught so v will be equal to 7v naught by 8 now for the right chamber we can also apply tv power gamma minus 1 is equals to constant how we have write this pv power gamma is equals to constant and pv is equals to nrt so for p we can write nrt upon v is equals to constant but nrt is constant so we can write nrt upon v into v power gamma is equals to constant so t into v power gamma minus 1 is equals to constant we have just used the ideal gas equation here so initial temperature is t naught initial volume is v naught power 2 by 3 is equals to final temperature in right chamber is t2 final volume is v naught minus v that is 7 v naught by 8 whole power 2 by 3 so t naught v naught power 2 by 3 is equals to t2 v naught by 8 power 2 by 3 so t2 will be equal to this v naught power 2 by 3 will cancel out 8 power 2 by 3 into t2 so t2 will be equal to 2 cube whole power 2 by 3 t naught so t2 will be equal to 4 t naught now for left chamber We can apply conservation of moles because gas is not transferring from one chamber to another just expansion and compression of gas is taking place so we can use conservation of moles in the left chamber so we can write n is equals to p naught v naught upon r t naught this is the initial situation and the final situation will be 32 p naught into v naught plus v divided by r t1 this p naught and r will get cancel out so v naught upon t naught is equals to v naught plus v we have found 7 v naught by 8 divided by t1 into 30 so simplify this t1 will be equal to 60 t naught so this will be the temperature in left chamber during the equilibrium situation now in the second case we want to find the work done by the gas in right chamber so for right chamber we can write delta Q is equals to delta U plus delta W 
so delta w will be delta q minus delta u but delta q is 0 so work done will be equal to minus of n cv delta t that is t2 minus t0 so minus 1 number of moles are 1 so minus 1 cv for monoatomic it is 3 by 2 r t2 is 4 t0 minus t0 so work done will be equal to minus 9 r t0 by 2 so this will be a final answer in this example, an ideal gas has molar heat capacity Cv at constant volume. We want to find the heat capacity as a function of volume if process equation is given as T is equals to T0 into E power alpha V. Now, by the first law of thermodynamics, we can write dq is equals to du plus dw. dq is nc delta t is equals to du is ncv delta t plus dw is p dv. So, c can be written as cv plus p dv upon n d t. So, C will be Cv plus Rt upon V. P can be written as Rt upon V into dV by dt. So, C will be Cv plus R. We can write dV by V divided by dt by t. We have just rearranged the terms. Now, the process equation is given by T is equals to T naught E power alpha V. Taking log on both the sides, we can write log T is equals to log T naught plus alpha V. Now, differentiating on the both the side, we can write dt by T is equals to 0 plus alpha dv so dt by t into dv is equals to alpha put this value in the equation of c that is equals to cv plus r into dv divided by dt by t will be equal to 1 by alpha so this will give us the answer r upon alpha v so c will be equal to cv plus r upon alpha v so we have got the value of specific heat capacity as a function of volume in this example, we want to find the relation between volume and temperature of a gas in a process in which molar heat capacity C varies with temperature T as C is equals to Cv plus alpha T. Now, by first law of thermodynamics, we have just found in this previous example that C is equals to Cv plus R dv by v divided by dt by t Compa comparing this with c is equals to cv plus alpha t we can write alpha is equals to r dv by v into dt so dv by v will be equal to alpha dt divided by r 
taking log or integrating both the side we can write log v is equals to alpha t by r plus log c here c is the constant of integration so log v is equals to log alpha t by r can be written as e power alpha t by r because this two will be cancelled out and simplified will be alpha t by r plus log c so log v is equals to log of c into e power alpha t by r so v into e power minus alpha t by r is equals to c that is constant in this example an ideal monoatomic gas undergoes a process which is initial which internal energy depends upon its volume as u is equals to a root v we want to find the work done by gas and heat transferred to the gas to increase its internal energy by 200 joule and molar specific heat capacity for this process the internal energy is given by ncv delta t so we can write n c v delta t is equals to a root v c v for monoatomic is 3 by 2 r delta t is equals to a root v so n r t into 3 by 2 is equals to a root v but n r t can be written as p v so p v into 3 by 2 is equals to a root v so p v power 1 by 2 is equals to 2a by 3 now increase in internal energy is given 200 joule so delta u is equals to 3 nr by 2 delta t is equals to 200 so nr delta t will be 400 by 3 joule now work done in increasing energy by 200 joule will be equal to p integration dv that is equal to pressure can be given by 2a by 3 root v integration dv So, simplifying this integration, we will get work done is equals to 4a by 3 into root v2 minus root v1. So, the work done will be equal to 2 into p2v2 minus p1 v1 so 2 into n r t2 minus t1 that will be equal to 2 into 400 by 3 that is equals to 800 by 3 joule now delta q is equals to delta w plus delta u that is 800 by 3 plus 200 that will be equal to 1400 by 3 joule the molar specific heat c is given by q by n delta t so one q is 1400 by 3 and n delta t is 400 by 3 r that will be equal to 7 r by 2
In this example, a horizontal cylinder of cross-sectional area 1 meter square contains two moles of an ideal monoatomic gas. Mass of piston is 2 kg. At certain instant, a heater which supplies heat at the rate of 35 joule per second is switched on during expansion. The gas obeys the law Pv power minus 4 is equals to constant. The piston is thermally insulated. We want to find the speed of piston after Twenty seconds. The process equation is given by Tv power minus 4 is equals to constant. We can write this equation as Pv power minus 3 is equals to constant or P is equals to Cv power 3. Now let during the expansion volume of gas changes from V1 to V2. Temperature of gas changes from T1 to T2 and the pressure of gas changes from P1 to P2. The work done is given by integration P dV limits from V1 to V2. So P can be written as CV cube dV limits from V1 to V2. So it will be C V2 power 4 minus V1 power 4 whole divided by 4. But this V2 power 4 can be written as V2 cube into V2 minus V1 cube into V1 divided by 4. But C V2 cube is P2. So W will be P2 V2 minus P1 V1 divided by 4. But P2 V2 minus P1 V1 is equals to N or delta T divided by 4. Now, the change in internal energy is N C V delta T that is equals to 3 by 2 N R delta T. Now, by first law of thermodynamics, we can write delta Q is equals to delta U plus delta W that is equals to n r delta t into 3 by 2 plus 1 by 4. So n r delta t into 7 by 4. Now W is given by nr delta t by 4 and Q is given by 7 by 4 nr delta t. So we can write delta Q by W is equals to 7 or dW by dt is equals to 1 by 7 dQ by dt and it is given as 5 joule per second. This is the rate of work done by gas in or on piston. So if we neglect the work done by atmospheric pressure, then by work energy theorem, work done is equals to change in kinetic energy and that is equals to 5. So dk is equals to integration 5 dt. So k will be equal to 0 to t integration dt is 5 t k is half m v square that is equals to 5 t we want to find speed at t is equals to 20 so half m v square is equals to 20 into 5 
mass is given 2 kg so this 2 will get cancelled out so v square is equal to 100 and v will be equal to 10 meter per second so at the end of 20 second the velocity of this piston will be 10 meter per second let us see one question based on the entropy an ideal gas is taken from initial state VITI to final state VFTF by an unspecified process. We want to find the change in entropy. Now, from the first law of thermodynamics, we can write dQ is equal to dU plus dW. Dividing both these sides by temperature, we can write dQ by T is equal to NCV dt divided by t this tw is pdv by t now change in entropy delta s is given by dq by t from initial state to final state so dq by t is given by and cv integration dt by t from initial to final plus P by T integration dV initial to final. So delta S will be and CV dT by T Ti to Tf plus P by T integration Vi to Vf dV. But PV is equal to NRT, so we can write P by T is equal to NR upon V. So delta S will be equal to NCV integration dt by D limits from TI to TF plus NR integration dV by V limits from vi to vf so delta s will be equal to n cv integration of 1 by t will be ln into tf upon ti plus nr ln vf upon vi now let us understand the working of heat engines the essence of technology in our society is the ability to use sources of energy like wind energy, water energy, fossil fuels energy or energy from nuclear reactions. Most of the energy that we use is in a form of heat which is further taken to do useful work. Any device that transforms heat partly into work or mechanical energy is called heat engine so heat engine is any device that converts heat energy into mechanical energy generally a quantity of matter inside the heat engine undergoes inflow and outflow of heat expansion and compression and sometimes change in phase. We call this matter the working substance of the engine. For example, a mixture of fuel, vapor and air in a gasoline or diesel engine or steam in a steam engine are the working substance. The most common and simplest kind of engine to analyze is one in which the working substance undergoes a cyclic process that is a sequence of processes that eventually brings the substance in the same state in which it started. In some of these processes, working substance absorbs a total amount of heat Q1 from an external reservoir at some high temperature, while in some process of cycle, it releases the total amount of heat Q2 
in the external reservoir at some high temperature T2. So let us understand the heat engine. First let us draw the schematic diagram for the heat engine. While understanding the heat engine we will keep this thing at the back of our mind that we are considering the engine of car or engine of bike or any vehicle. So that will be a hot reservoir. You can understand it as your fuel tank in which the combustion will take place. Due to that combustion, some of the heat will be given to the heat engine. Let's say Q1 amount of heat is given. This hot reservoir is at temperature T1. Now, due to this heat energy input, this heat engine will do some work. But not all of the heat is converted into work. Some is released in atmosphere as well. Let's say Q2 amount is released in atmosphere. The atmosphere is called sink. It is also called cold reservoir. Let's say its temperature is T2. We can say this sink is the silencer of your vehicle. So we have given Q1 amount of heat from which W amount of work is done and remaining Q2 amount of heat is released in the atmosphere. So we can write the energy relation as Q1 is equals to W plus Q2. Now, if we want to find the efficiency of the cycle, you can understand it from the vehicle point of view or any automobile point of view. Q1 is the amount of heat given. So we can say it is the amount of fuel burnt. It is related to amount of fuel burnt. Work done is the amount of work done by the system we can say it or we can assume it to be the number of kilometers that it can move in given fuel so basically it is a mileage so any heat engine is efficient if it is doing more and more amount of work in less input of energy so efficiency eta is given by W divided by Q1. But from this we can write work done is equals to Q1 minus Q2. So the efficiency will be Q1 minus Q2 divided by Q1. So, the efficiency is given by 1 minus Q2 by Q1. This will be the efficiency of heat engine. Now, for the engine to have 100% efficiency, for eta to be equal to 100%, Q2 should be equal to 0 as whole energy input is converted into work. In such a case, energy conservation does not rule out, but practically it is not possible. Even if we can eliminate various kinds of losses associated with the actual heat engines, we cannot achieve the 100% efficiency practically. Now, the exit reverse function is of refrigerators and heat pumps. So, let us understand that working. We have seen that heat engines take heat from hot place and gives off heat to the colder place. For example, the air condition. Its work is to absorb the heat from given room and where its outlet is given, you can feel there is a hot air coming out of it. So, it will absorb heat from one place and it will release it to the other place. Now, the refrigerator does the opposite. It takes the heat from a cold place. 
that means it will take heat from the colder place that is inside the refrigerator and gives it off to a warmer place outside the refrigerator a heat engine has net output of mechanical work the refrigerator requires a net input of mechanical work a heat pump is same as refrigerator the term refrigerator or heat pump depends on the purpose of the device if we use the device to cool the portion or space like inside a chamber and reservoir at high temperature surrounding it we call the device refrigerator but if the purpose is to pump heat into a portion of space when the environment is cold then the device is called the heat pump in refrigerator working substance is generally in gaseous form for example the freon or ammonia which goes through the following steps first there is sudden expansion of gas from high to low pressure which cools it and converts it into a vapor liquid mixture the absorption of heat by the cold fluid from the region to be cooled and converting into the vapor heating up of the vapor due to external work done on the system it release of heat by the vapor of the surroundings bringing it to the initial state and completing the cycle let us understand the working with the schematic diagram there is one cold reservoir let's see your room from which some amount of energy is absorbed let's say its temperature is t1 and energy absorbed is q1 and this energy is being released in some hot reservoir its temperature is t2 now as the heat energy is flowing from lower temperature to higher temperature it cannot flow automatically for that we have to do some external work so we have done work w on the system and as a result the heat energy q2 is released in the hot reservoir so from this we can write q2 is equals to q1 plus w now if we consider it to be the air condition then we can say the air condition is good if it is doing less amount of work that means your electricity consumption is less and it is absorbing more and more amount of heat from the room so it is giving a very good amount of cooling so the efficiency of the ac or heat pump can be given by amount of heat absorbed per unit work this is called the coefficient of performance that is equals to cop of the air condition or the refrigerator from this equation we can write w is equals to q2 minus q1 so q1 divided by q2 minus q1 is equals to cop but we can clearly see it is the inverse of efficiency of heat engine so if the same device is first used as heat engine and then used as heat pump or refrigerator then its efficiency and coefficient of performance are related as 1 upon efficiency is equals to coefficient of performance now 